Recording in progress. Okay, so good morning. Uh, we are team speedrunners. Uh, we are a team of also year four. Okay, I'll explain it later. So good morning, because it's morning somewhere. Uh, so who are we? So we are a bunch of year four kids. My name is uh, Kenneth. I am a year four comp science student who sp specializes in graphics and games. Uh, my name is Kion. Uh, I'm also a year four. Uh, technically, and I specialize in uh, AI. I'm Ivan. Uh, computer science year four also specializing in software engineering and AI. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's who we are. And basically, we had an idea, right, for the start of um, our hackathon. So this is the group member that was supposed to join us for hand and roll. Unfortunately, he didn't read instructions because simple instructions just five words hit, right? Look at him. He's just a silly little boy. So first of all, right, his main objective in uni, right, is to get the most number of SUable mods possible in order to graduate without like touching his cat. So as you can see here, I searched SU in our chat and came up with over 500 instances of him saying he's gonna SU things. So one of them were like, why don't we make a bot, right, to help you speedrun NUS? So what we called it, speedrunners. So this was our dev post thing. Uh, we were kind of tired after that, so that's why we, we were like that. So um, it's a Tyrion bot. Where first of all it will give you a personalized quiz, um, and okay we'll do the pitch thing later. But we also use Dali to generate the art. The quiz is unfortunately hard coded, and yes, and we are glad that we didn't show AI the problem because AI is not a solution for everything. Yeah, so uh, now we will go through the pitch that we did. So as you can see here, right, or if you, it's working right. Okay. So if you whip out your phones right now and search speedrunners over here. You will come up with a um, UI, which says like, uh, please, yeah, once you do slash start, you will first need to key in the number of MCs that you need to SU. So for example, um, in computing, you need 32 UEs, you know, MCs worth of UEs to graduate. So when you do slash begin, uh, space 32, you will then get be brought to a, a wonderful... Oh, you're right. Okay, but my Telegram chats are like because It will try to find the UIs and then when you start, and you have to first begin uh, the process of keying in the number of UIs you need. So let's say I need um, 16 UIs. So it will go through a process of basically asking you, first of all, whether you're from a RC or a hall. And um, this will prioritize any RC or hall mods that are SUable with no exams whatsoever. Next, you you um you get your uh what's that called faculty? Yes, let's say I'm from computing, and this will also prioritize your faculty's mods. So um it's done in the form of an interactive quiz. Each um, question we is uh, has to do with a certain uh, topic or faculty of how we categorize the mods. So how we categorize the mods was we basically took the faculty that the one was from and uh, we, we chucked it on the list. And we also had to filter whether the mod had an exam and whether it was SUable or not. So this was, we had a final list out of uh, how many mods was it? Uh, a lot. About 15,000 15, mods, yeah. yeah. So we used something. Uh, they, they used something. I'm just the guy that made the quiz. So over here, um, there's kind of, it's a, it's, it's a crazy um, quiz where it allows you to like, oh, it's so, it's so, so uh, meaningful. There's a lot of pictures. But all it's doing is it will just it's just tracking like, how much you like a certain subject. Uh. So I'm just going to go through this. Uh, the images were generated using uh, DALE and Leonardo AI. Yes. So this for bio, this for thing. You can also do it. Still, it still works if you want to try it. Yeah. So over here, after you're done, uh, you'll have a, <laughs> you'll have a uh, message that says congratulations and it'll tell you uh, how to um, sort through. So who here has used Tinder? Or any dating app before. Let's go! Let's go. Okay, so just like Tinder, right? We put yes on the right and no on the left. So let's say um, I actually don't want to do women's professional development. You know what I mean? So I'll click no. Right? Why you laugh? Why laugh? Don't laugh. You know? All these mods are really, really cool. So let's say I really want to do effective leadership in action. So I click yes. And you can see, because it's, had, it's two MCs from above, right? Below here, it changes from 16 to 14. So I'm just gonna click. Yes, I would love to do marketing venture. I hate global industry insights. I love investing because I love money. 
I love all of this. Oh my gosh, I love entrepreneurship. And I hate health, but I love data literacy for healthcare. So after you're done, a little um, thing will show up, which if you, when you click it, uh, it will actually bring you to the NUS mods, which then you can add to semester. And then when you go to the timetable, you have it here. Wow, isn't it great? Yes, everyone clap. Yes, sir. So yeah, that's what we did for hack and roll. Um, what was my next slide? Yes. Ah, right. Yeah. Uh, so as you can see, like all of the modules that we recommended are basically CSCU, and if you have ever dealt with NUS mods before, you notice that there's no straightforward way to filter for CSCU modules. Right. So if you try, the most you can do is um, maybe. You can SU it. Yeah, yes. you can SU it, but it's not compulsory SU, which is like where the good stuff's at, right? So we're, what we did is we crawled basically the entire universe of uh, NUS mods um, causes, and then we filtered pretty much uh, into this very specific field called grading basis, and then filtered out everything that was compulsory SU, yeah, and also no exam, yeah. And at the end, um, after after all, okay, so a bit of background, right? Um, a bit of background. This is what we did for Hack and Roll 2022, and it also won top eight. By the way, yeah. So it's 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 uh it's a site marketing here. There's this a uh, venues app that helps you find like study venues. So this was before uh when NUS Sports had this feature to uh filter like uh, or rather search for empty classrooms, right? Uh, you know, there's, there's this feature now that you can search for empty classrooms. Yeah, they did not have it then, uh. So we did it. Yeah, and this one just top eight. So just uh. Uh, a, a guide for all y'all who want to take part in hack and roll like next year. The winning formula is something to do with NUS mods API together with a Telegram bot. Guaranteed top eight. We also yeah. have a negative example because last year we did just Telegram bot without NUS mods API. We didn't win anything. Yeah, so so this is clearly yeah. 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 You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so some actual tips during the hackathon. Uh, first of all, split the word and make sure everyone knows what they're doing. So uh, for me, I'm, I, I hate coding actually. So I, I threw all the coding work to them. So I, I basically made the quiz myself. And uh, bring out any blockers early because during a hackathon, you may have like issues with certain um, things. For example, uh, oh, I, I can't do this feature because the API is, is wrong, right? So you're probably there with your friends. So please feel free to feel inferior if you need because you know people should actually do that more in computing, I feel. And uh, please enjoy the other events. So I also want Iso Lang with this wonderful poem over here. Yeah, but no one was clapping because I think everyone was tired uh, during the event. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this took me one hour to do. Yes. Yeah. So this is uh, the Korean language called Rockstar. Um, this whole this chunk of code basically gives uh, if you input a integer, it will give you that integer's factorial. It actually works. Yes. Chef. Yeah, it's a Ooh, interesting. Okay. Yes. Wait, is that it? Is that is that all the slides? Okay, I, I, I guess that's all the slides. Yes, so thank you so much. Uh, are there any questions? QA. QA. How does the recommendation system work? My I'll recommend seizure system for the app, is it? Okay. You want to show the it's like we don't. <laughs> we don't have the slide. Okay. So, uh, how does the recommendation engine work. Uh, essentially, uh, everything is through that quiz that you saw just now. Uh, if you saw just now, like, um, both your faculty, uh, your preferences in terms of what, what faculty's modules you like to take, um, yeah, all, all, all that gets basically ranked. So um, I think we maybe assign a weight. Um, yeah, we assign a weight to all of those uh, inputs that we collected, and then we fed it all into a single score, uh, which basically uh, is the, like, it's a score that determines how much you like a certain module or not. Yeah, and modules, they are, they are essentially, um, all the modules provided by a same faculty, you'll get the same score. Yeah, so there's not really a way to break ties unless like, you have other um, factors like, I don't know, your RC modules or whatever, then those get top priority. Yeah, so I, I would say like currently it's a pretty sort of um, uh, discretionary way that we decided to make the recommendation algo. Yeah, uh, but of course we're open to suggestions on how you can change it if you have any ideas. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, is, it, is there a way to list out all the CSC votes? No. Y yes. For, well, for the low price of five ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And actually, yes, because uh, that is the the, the sort of uh, data set that we use uh, in the back end. So we do have like a, a, a Excel sheet. Yeah, yeah, but it's not we are we didn't include it in the in the board because of obviously we want people to go through the board and use our board, right? Rather than here you go, uh here's all the modules that you can CSU. Yeah, yeah there's a workaround though. If you just keep pressing no you can you can go and scroll through everything. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> if you do want to look at all that. How do you like figure out how okay, so uh step one was to essentially uh DDoS the nearest mods API, uh, query every single module that there is there, uh, which is like 15,000 modules. And that, that includes all the historical modules. So modules that are discontinued, no longer offered. Yeah, that makes up the universe of 15,000 modules. And once we get that, then uh, we essentially it's a for loop through 15,000 modules for this very magical field called grading basis. Right? And, uh, and, and it's very nice, the nice people at NUS mods uh, decided that they want to use a convenient or rather a standard uh, way of representing this. It's called computer satisfactory slash unsatisfactory. So as long as you put this string in and then search and rather filter based on that string, then everything will pop up. Yeah. And I think just what happens is that everything that is CSU has no exam. So there, uh, yeah, what, what we found is that there's no CSU mod that has an exam. So just nice, like, like yeah, if you're taking a CSU mod, there's no exam. So. And then after that filtering, there was a more manual process. So from 15,000, I think we got down to like, like, like 100 modules. Yeah, yeah. after from 15,000, mm -hmm. we got down to about 100 modules just from the automated <coughs> filters. And then there were some other filters that we can't do automatically, or rather it's very tedious to do automatically, like uh, the prerequisites. So for some reason, some of the CSU bots have a prerequisite that, you, uh, that is not as suitable. Yeah, and then those we just decide to nerf it, like we don't include it in our uh, in our data set. Yeah. So that filter was this guy. Yeah, this guy is the yeah, filter. Yeah, so it was Kenneth, we, we implemented Kenner filter, where Kenner will look through all uh, the 100 and plus mods, and through linear time search, and slowly one by one select it. Yeah. Yes. Um, we also have to remove like, stuff like from Yong Lulin, because you know, we're not doctors here. Unless you all want to learn about surgery. Oh, but there is a... There is, there is a Yong Lulin. Go on, Melissa, more if you want yeah. to. If you're interested in pre med kind of thing, yeah, there, there, there's a mod you can take and it's as you will I think. Yes, uh, just for the quiz, just make sure that this is your highest one, the bio question. Yeah. <laughs> then it will appear. It will appear somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah. thank you. Basically, any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, if uh, anyone got a question you want to ask, you can also submit at the link. Oh, right. Yeah. You can upload How do we see that? Oh, is that what? I guess. Let's see what other stuff. Okay, uh, so we have checked one question right now. Oh. So, Anonymous asks, how many CS you must you guys ship in your NUS CS? Funny, we, the three of us don't really take that much CSU mods. But it's, it's mainly because of the guy that we said. Yeah. In the yeah. Presentation. So this guy, he took um, the famous ones are CFG1104, which is Career Catalyst. Then there's also the, the, the money, money Matters thing, which is CFG103, 104. It's like God's hand. Yeah, oh. then, oh yeah, during your presentation, you get a free buffet. Yeah, it's a buffet mod. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, during, during COVID, they sort of like uh, conducted this online. So, big L if you took it during COVID. After COVID, uh, then they resumed the, the okay, okay. buffet. So the story is before COVID, this was a buffet mod, like really buffet. They catered a buffet at i tree. And then you go and uh, it's a it's an evening module, so it's like six thirty to nine thirty, mm. something like that. Yeah, but, but they cater buffet, so that's a good thing. Yeah. So uh, but, but that was before COVID. Then during COVID, it was online, so no food, big L. Then after COVID, they uh, catered like bento sets, so you still get food. So yeah, uh, highly recommend to go if you have two two MCs that you want to spend. So it's like week one to week six of semester two. Yeah. So if week one to week six, yeah, you have like Monday evenings, yeah, take this mod. Highly recommend it. <laughs> Yeah, we all did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, questions? I was thinking if I got this correct. So, people who are looking for this particular thing, what I was called? Journey of the Enemy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, 
they have this much of my account that causes the withdrawal. And then it's like a personality test on the board. Mm. So it will narrow down to recommend like several. It won't narrow down, it will just rank. Yeah. Yeah. Soft. Yeah. It'll just soft. Oh, just soft. It'll be like a queue. Like you know how when you select find a match and then on Tinder or okay you're like, I like, don't like, I like, yeah, that kind of thing. But you go through the entire universe with you don't like any of the box. And the sorting is really important because if you have like fifty <coughs> yeah, we get like fifty five, I think fifty five modules uh, in our final like filtered set. So we, we can't really show you fifty five modules like I'll say. Uh, so if, if let's say we show you the first twenty modules and you like all of them. And uh, you add it to your list, then that's the end of it. You won't see the other, the remaining 30 modules, right? So it's important to rank those that we think you like, so that you see that first and you add them to your list first. Any more questions? It's still Monday, yeah, it's still Monday evening. It's still Monday evening. Six to three. Um I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Promotion. Yes, sir. I won't. <laughs> uh free A for free A for um, No but it's a free A. Anyone who takes computation should get a free A. I don't want to say I think it was quite easy. Hmm? That one is uh, using Max, so it's prototyping using Max. It's a uh, software. You drag and drop, drag and drop nodal programming. If you're more interested, you can take uh, sin signals and synthesis. <laughs> this is a more recommendation. This is this is <laughs> synthesizers. I missed the. I guess the guy got fired. Never mind. <laughs> it was a, it was available when I was there. Yeah. Um, if you also want more recommendations from other faculties, I have over two hundred MCs of experience. So yeah, you can also ask me. Exactly two hundred. Exactly two hundred one when I finish. Yes, two hundred one. Yeah. Okay. It is done. Is there? Is there? Yeah, I think we are done. We are done. If, if anyone wants to look for us, we are like... Yeah, we are, we'll be at the back eating pizza. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Team Speed NUS. And next up, we have uh, Team Luna AI, who also won the top eight, um, for one of the top eight winning projects. Yeah, let's welcome uh, Ming Yuan, Brian, Ji Ho, and Benjamin. Hey. Um, Benjamin. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Like, if you guys need share screen, just use uh, oh, this yeah. one or Thanks. this. Yeah, hi everyone, we didn't know we need slides, so um, we have our depots. That's the wrong slide. Sorry, wrong project. <laughs> That's the next project. How did it come out? Wait, sorry. <laughs> sorry, we, we didn't know this project by the way, it's a different one. One sec. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, bro. Wait, sorry, no, it, it became an external display rather than a. That's mirror. Yeah. What is it? Can you shift it? No, that's You drag it over. No, but it's still there. Like, you need to mirror it. It takes apart, takes apart. Okay, never mind, never mind. I'll just... Okay, okay. Hello, bro. 
It's, it's just full screen now. Yeah. Sorry, technical yeah, difficulties. Look at it now. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, hi everyone. So, um, I'm Ryan, a year two computer engineer. Then he's Kiho, year one CS and Biz, and Ming Ren, year two CS. Yeah, so what we made was uh, Luna AI. It was a multilingual voice agent that we can answer um, government queries. Yeah, so I think before I talk, I can just show you a quick demo of how it works. Yeah. For government services. Oh. And we're mainly targeting the uh, people who no, okay. would rather speak than type, such as elderly who are not very good at English, as well as elderly who don't really like to type. So let's give a demonstration of the product or the agent. Can you hear? Is it loud enough? Hack and roll chatbot. I can help you with any questions you have about the CPF. Press 1 for English. I urge you. Yeah, so we support four languages so what's the difference between an ordinary account and a savings account in CPF? So for the special fund, when, at what age should I start taking notice of that? Which is for retirement and investments. You should start taking notice of it if you want to plan for your retirement. And make yeah, so that's the gist. Then like, we also have a dashboard where like, the, the call center will actually be displayed here. So this... Yeah, so a bit of background is that what we're doing is that this tool is mainly targeted for call center agents. So if you are a call center agent working in like a CPF, for example, so you'll be control of this bot and then you can control all the information it has. So how we did it, we actually scraped the CPF website and then we indexed it in our vector database. Then from there, we will put all the information here as text. Then say if there's any information changes, like cause there's changes always in the website, right? Then the call center agent can just edit the dashboard and then Whatever the calls, whatever the bot says will be based on the latest information. Yeah. So that's what we did. Then regarding for inspiration, real one or the, or the judge one? Sorry. Real, real story. Real okay. So, so what we told the judge was, it was actually um, inspired by the, um, his grandmother. So you want to say about the story? <laughs> okay. So okay, bro. What happened was like, Every week, right, uh, I'll notice that my parents have to spend a lot of time explaining to my grandparents about all the CPF schemes and government schemes. Uh, uh, and, and I feel like, like they are really left behind in this digital age where things are happening so quickly, you know, very quickly. So, yeah, so I, I, feel, I feel like this will, be a, this will be a right place to use, use a new investment in LM and embeddings are to create all this. So, we <laughs> <I> laugh. <laughs> this is real, okay? <laughs> yes. So, right, yeah, so... Okay, yeah, but so, yeah, TLDR is that. Yeah. So, actually, at first, we didn't really start with a story. When the judges came us to ask us, like, oh, what, what, what were we doing? We just said, like, oh, we were a voice agent, targeted elderly, and blah, blah. So, like, some of them were like, oh, okay, great. But it wasn't really, like, compelling to them. Then after that, like, we realized that they weren't very interested. Then we like switch it up with a real story, of course. Yeah. Story. yeah. Then I think from there, like the judges were really more intrigued in like what we were doing and the pinpoints we we're solving. Yeah. So I think from that we really learned that. Yeah. I think, especially when you're trying to like sell your product to people, make sure that they can relate to your problem. Because if they don't, then yeah, you're just yapping to them and they don't really care. So yeah, I think that's yeah. quite important. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Then. I think another reason why we chose this was that. Like from my personal experience as well, I feel like the call center industry is like ripe for disruption. Eh? Because shut up, fuck. I mean, shut up. <coughs> so right, what happened was that I don't know if you all made a lot of calls to call centers before, but like if you do right, there'll be a long waiting time and then sometimes your call won't even be answered. Sometimes the, the dude or girl talks too fast and can't really catch catch what they're trying to say. Yeah. 
or sometimes they don't even have the right information or updated information and you hold on the phone for 30 minutes for nothing so this was one of the our inspirations behind this because actually this solves all the problems that I mentioned earlier and all the problems that are rife in the call center industry la. so long long waiting time like as you can see you didn't really have to wait very long then um, what, what's the next one? Mis mismatch information or wrong information as you can see we have a central database on our dashboard for the call service industry so any changes you made there right will actually be reflected instantly with the next call that you make and then the lastly remember that I said that um, so the chat will be like that yeah I'll see right I said that sometimes they talk a bit too fast and you really can't catch what they're trying to say we also lock all the we also lock all the chat locks so you're able to read at your own time and target yeah include and also it includes a summary of what the call was about so when you re revisit it at a later date you'll be able to know what's going on and personally we feel that this have application far wider than just CPF or any government industry yeah mm -hmm. so actually then another thing was that we actually wanted to do build a voice agent but we actually wanted to build it for a university information uh, at first yeah. yeah so like say if you are applying to a university then you could just use the voice agent instead but then on like the morning itself we like decided like actually like as a like as a pre-university student you wouldn't really want to like talk to a voice agent you can just search stuff on your own so we're like it doesn't really solve the problem that we hoped it to that's why we brainstorm more and then we eventually landed on this mm -hmm. solution yeah and i think is the main thing main takeaway i think from our project is that yeah, although the technology is important, you have to make sure that exciting technology is solving a good enough problem as well. So yeah, I think that's something we learned from this project. Yeah. yeah. Um, to add on, I think that LRMs, there's a lot of um, very low hanging fruit uh, in many kind of applications. But I feel for a hackathon, it's like we only have 24 hours to solve a problem. So we have to pick a problem that is significant enough and people in Singapore, the judges can relate to. So, um, while well, there's a lot of things you can do, but maybe just think in terms of think backwards from the kind of product that you want to create and think if it's going to be useful and convincing. Um, if the judges are going to think that this application will actually create any value, um, not, just for the, not just in terms of the tech, but also maybe for like the industry that you're trying to get into. So, um, I think that's one thing that we did and we pivoted at the start of the hackathon uh, and also like since there's only 24 hours the initial idea is very important so you don't really have time to change ideas so I feel like a lot of times maybe you just win at the idea stage really like even though you might implement your idea for like 20 hours but if the initial idea isn't like rock solid and you don't have like the problem that you want to solve in mind it may not be very helpful even if you make it like very fancy and the UI very beautiful so yeah always like so a reflection for ourselves would be to continue like thinking about the problem that we want to solve first um and work from there yeah yeah so yeah this is the chat and at 1 a.m i was like hmm should we change our project <laughs> like although even though we already planned the whole thing so yeah i think yeah always be sub always be flexible to change because you never know if your project will be better yeah okay that's all i think thanks Yeah, any questions, yeah, feel free to ask. Sorry. Um. Okay. Yeah. That was one of the reasons why we chose elderly as well. Because we felt that they'll be more comfortable. Yeah, out. Mm. Yeah, comfortable talking to someone on the phone. Like I, I agree that like, the voice sounds a bit scary. Yeah. But yeah, it's. Newer model, newer newer models, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, the voice would be better. Yeah. But I think it's it's more of combining the, the, the feature of being able to call the number and the chat and then like actually talking, right? Mm. Like because because chatbot usually is just some button on the corner. Of the yeah. Button and just type the question. 
Mm. Yep. Sure. Okay. But I have no issue with that. But some people prefer calling, so this is good for them. Yeah, yeah. we agree. Thanks. We strongly agree. Thanks for the affirmation. We have one question on Pigeon Hole, which is how do your team split your tasks during the hackathon? <laughs> R the real one or the <laughs> real one? Uh? <laughs> okay, so we yeah. I I scraped lah. So okay, so we mentioned we had a scraper, right? Yeah. So like, but we we at first wanted to do like a uh, scrape by like Python, like so. But then like the thing with like scraping like that because the certain tags in the website weren't really represented. For example, say you wanted to scrape by H ones, right? But every website has a different the H ones a different meaning. Like for example, say if you want like the type of accounts like could be a H1 and then another H1 could be like something totally unrelevant. So we couldn't really find a good algorithmic way to like scrape. So that's why we had a GPT-10, the newest model here, to help us like manually put the certain relevant information inside. Yeah, so we one person like scraped and deployed as well. He also did deployment by the way. Then like him, he did the yeah, back end work. I like setting up the embeddings and setting up the back end. Then I did the voice agent. So I did all the Logic regarding the voice agent. Then another friend did all the front end. Yeah, so that's how we split the work. Mm. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Please don't like drop food. Please be clean. Clean up after yourself. Thank you. Thank you.
life is like all the time. It's professional. Yeah. It's, it's all serious. <laughs> and then the insanity just. Wait, uh, we, we should just uh, close the bar first. Like, no, but the DPM. No, so my, my, uh, no, my DPM. My DPM. Alright, I need to end this thing. Just in case it, it's still logging. <laughs> Okay, I will start it now. The app thing as well, but we don't launch call capture. Eight and eight. Uh, uh, your battery is running low. Yeah. How many? Do you have? Yeah. 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 It is all oh, okay. You just no, no, it's because he's not printing. Eight? No, it's fine. We can wait. Are you not going <laughs> Is that why you put it on the inside? No, it's because I ran off space oh, on the outside. Okay. Oh, sorry. It was, it was at the point that I was feeling when I felt bad about overlapping stickers. No, I just don't give a damn. Yes. It's covered here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's an like end. Mental evolution. Yeah, sir. Next time you try pasting on a screen. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, oh, no, no. Oh, wait, wait. The, oh, 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 oh. Just this? Here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah, I think that I think Where's the 
That was his idea, and it so happened that someone had the exact same idea. I said, what the I typed it in. They were like, shit, it's thicker. What did they put there? Go on. Go on. I respect the actual good use of a device. Hi, everyone. Please, I said, so we'll be starting the next two talks from uh, Hack and Roll winners. The first one is Team Fish, Addison, Tia yes. and Jimmy are here to talk to you about Top Catcher. Hey. Welcome them. Yeah. Hey. No, I don't know which one. You good? You guys good? You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. Okay, so hi guys. Uh, we are Team Fish. I'm Jimmy. That's Addison and that's Tia Alright, Alright, next slide. So, Catchers. They've been around for years. Every single one of us has probably dealt with them at some point in time. Uh, I'm sure some of us have probably dealt with a capture probably just today. Next. So, how can you be sure with captures that you're not a robot? Next. Right. How can you be sure that they're not a robot? How can you be sure that everyone around you is not a robot? Introducing code capture. Okay, so as you know, GPT, AI, like the multimodal AI, like the Gemini Ultra Pro thingy, um, it's on the rise. So how can we ensure that, you know, whatever's on the internet is all made by human? Anyone here ever heard of the dead internet theory? Yes, yes? Yeah, it's about, it's a conspiracy where most of the activities online is ran by bots. Right. So... We design we design Code Catcher to be the barrier separating human activity and bot activities on the internet. So this is achieved by validating all network traffic, uh, inbound and outward, outbound traffic. It also is powered by AI, machine learning, and also has a privacy first approach to our solution at its core. So we've actually compared to prove our credibility in the capture space. We compared against other trustworthy providers like Cloudflare, Twinit, um, ReCapture by Google, and HCapture. And based on a, sample, a representative sample size of the three of us, <laughs> um, we, we actually found that Corp Capture, this, <laughs> is extremely trustworthy to the point where it even it's hard to And um, it's also somewhat practical. Uh, somewhat. Somewhat practical. <laughs> Just as practical as yeah. <laughs> so um, okay. So now let's. So now you know we've heard a lot about this like app, but what is it? So very simply, every ten seconds. Okay. For every megabyte you send or receive, you have to solve a capture. It is that simple. You know that is how we keep the internet safe for everyone around here. So what do we mean by captures? Please don't the lock. Um. So, first, you know, there's the regular selected image. Then after that, you know, we were like, how do we make sure it's human? Humans have eyes. Optic verification. Just stare at your camera. Next, scissors, paper, stone. We, we also did another scientific study uh, by polling three people. Yep. And um, it was overwhelmingly, uh, so overwhelmingly we found that um, if you win scissors, paper, stone, you're not a robot. If you win against a computer, only humans can win. And finally, uh, when we did a bit more digging and a bit more research, we realized that 100% of the winners of West Waldo were humans. When we compared it among the sample size of the tree. Yep. So, therefore, the, these four create the foundation of the captures that we create. And another key thing, uh, especially you know, with the rise in like, AI and stuff, and uh, you know, our increased um, emphasis is privacy and security. You know, we take privacy and security really, really seriously. So what we mean by security? We will take over your device every 10 seconds or every megabyte. So it's also set up as a login item. So what this means is, uh, if, you're, if you aren't using macOS or something like that, a login item is something that launches on start. So this means that a user wouldn't be able to, let's say, you know, get irritated and try to restart their device. Because if they restart it, they're going to have to either boot it through recovery into safe mode, 
or they're going to see us again. Uh, and we use, and privacy is really important to us uh, because so every, all the machine learning is performed on device uh, and also because server is really expensive and we're very broke here. We, we came here for the free bubble can pizza. Yes. So therefore, you know, um, that, please stop auto locking. Okay. So uh, yeah, basically privacy and security very important to us and our budget. So uh, this is what uh, is uh, what, what our application is built on top of. So uh, Swift is used to write the macOS front end uh, application. Uh, Python for OpenCV. Uh, Python for stable diffusion pipeline so that we can generate all of the images. Uh, Python to pass the net stat stuff. Maybe we should have like exchanged the start last and second last line. Or whatever. <laughs> uh, net stat to get all of your network traffic and fast API. Does this sound creepy? Uh, probably, but like it's all local. It's fine. Uh, okay, so finally, before we show you a demo, uh, here, here's some amazing feedback we've gotten. So, um, you, know, they, you know, overall we've seen that people lo really love it, they find it really impressive, uh, they find it really amazing, and you know, one of the emphasis is open AI. You know, we, we really like push the AI to its limit here. Uh, so I think it's about time that we do a demo. Uh, yes. Yep. Okay, hopefully everything's running. I'm surprised this setup even works. Yes. So maybe let's go to YouTube, you know? Let's browse the video. Yeah, let's watch the budget. Oh yeah, Lawrence Wong. <laughs> uh, ah, it's right here. <laughs> they know me well. Blip, <laughs> and US for the... Oh, shit! Oh, no, I you said watch, You can watch Lawrence Wong. <laughs> so let's start our verification. You know? Oh, so this is the generic capture. So right now, you know, it's it's the capture everyone knows and loves. Uh, choose the rabbits. Uh, so is this a rabbit? Maybe. 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 All of these are generated with stable diffusion. Uh, so eventually we will finish selecting them. So uh. Just, just to show you some, uh, this is step. Oh. So this is our iris verification. So do you wanna... Yes. So basically, right now it's detecting my eyes. But to make sure that you're actually human, I'll force the user to go as close as they can to the camera to prove that they actually have eyes. So if I were to... <laughs> as you can see, it works. So just now, you know, we only had two captures because it was two megabytes. But the next time, it's going to be more. So let's hope for the oh okay it's here. Okay, it's back. Okay. So now now it's also about two megabytes. See, we we rounded it down because we were nice. Yeah. Let's go scissor paper stone. Scissor paper stone. All right. So I now have to win against. Oh, see, I won. Obviously a human. Thank you, thank you. Only a human. So now it's Waldo. It's the hard one. But if anyone wanna try. Anyone, anyway, you can come up here and try. It's pretty, pretty okay. It's not that hard. Yeah. No one? No? Okay. This is so sad. Okay, okay. You want to tell them where it is? Okay, so before I show you that, uh, let's actually um, show you how you can escape. So if you know um, if you know Mac OS, you know, mission control, when you swipe up and away, that does not work. This overlays on top of everything. <laughs> so you really cannot get out of this. There is your, your status bar, your restart buttons are all disabled. Uh, your dock, uh, you can't find it. Uh, sometimes we think we've built malware, but like other times we've built a very useful app. And uh, actually one of the things we didn't showcase is, you know, if you get too wrong, you get music. Wait, this is the Lawrence Wong video in the background. So, so now, now, you're, you're, now you're hearing the budget. So, so this is what happens if you get too many wrong. It starts playing Mexican music to wake the user up. To energize them to start doing more of that stuff, you know? Uh, yeah. So, apologies to our neighbors that attack and roll. Yes. So model is right here. It's in the middle between these two boxes. Just like everyone, you know, when you're doing catches, the stuff in between the boxes. Okay, so we're done. Yep. Okay, so that's about it.
We're still <laughs> watching the ad. Okay. Right. Okay. Oh, oops. My bad. Okay. Anyways, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. okay. So now let's, let's just open, open it for questions. questions. You have? Yes. What if you don't send like five to ten seconds? Like, what if your stuff is less than that? Oh, that's, that's really, really nice for you. You, you don't, don't get, get a capture. So and a subnet is still a viable option. Yeah. yeah. See, it's yes. so nice. But good at playing games. <laughs> that, that's the hard part. <laughs> okay. We're encouraging people to touch grass at this point. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, so any app, because, because this works on the system, system level, level. Mm. Because, because we're running it through that stack, so like, let's say if you just open up like your Maps app, where it loads up like the Maps data, congrats, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Exactly. We were, we were aiming for the most annoying hack. If it was unclear. Yes, exactly. exactly that. Do you have any more questions? How will we install this in my friend's laptop? Ah, good question. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. So, <laughs> yeah, you guys can try it on our local server. Uh, you can scan the QR code or go to the domain that we bought like two hours ago. fish. <laughs> <laughs> it will route you to a repo where you can pull it for yourself and try it out. Yep. So we, we, bought, we, we bought it because that way we can see like, you can run it off of my local server. Only Mac? Only Mac. Yes, only Mac. <laughs> no, no, but you can change that. That's this QR code right here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I guess that's about it, right? Oh, yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> How do you exit it? That's a really good question. So, if you're a developer, there's a developer menu that we have. Uh, so it's the it's the, the thing the hammer at the bottom. That's how we make sure we didn't like lock ourselves out. But for actual production, of course, we'll hide this. Like there there is no like quit. Yeah. yeah. So that's the only way that we could test and develop our app. Yeah, I'm, I'm spamming command Q right now, but it does not work. Yeah, and since this is also a login item, if you restart, yeah. it will just go back to this page. Yeah. 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 Uh, good luck to that. Good luck to them. That's all I have to say. Uh, have you tried buying a new device? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a question on Pigeon Hole. How do you make the spinning fish? Oh, that's, that's a really good question. Wait, how do we make the spinning fish? So, uh, <laughs> did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> Actually, a friend of ours uh, made the asset for the fish for us for our previous hackathon, and we've just been using fish. Um, for our hackathon projects. Yeah. Yep. And it's really funny. Yep. This is our like third time using fish. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, any more questions? Uh, I, I need a call to action on screen. Sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> so once again, you can try it on my local home, my local server, <laughs> and you can donate to us. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think that's all. Yeah. Alright, thank you everyone. You don't have to be in general anymore. Yeah, you don't have to be in general anymore. Uh, say something to display. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Give me a second, let me ask the previous team for oh, good. I remember they did something. Homa or something, I mean, which one Oh, I sent it. Yes. Homa, another one. Uh, is there a mirror for building display? Just give me a second. <laughs> Then you should be mirroring. So this will be mirror for main display. Yep. Then it should work. be. Yeah. One second. Maybe, maybe it's the input. Can I try a different adapter? Sure. Yeah. Uh, this is not. Oh. Let's plug it into an output. Because it recognizes the device. It's just not. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Maybe we could try with this. Maybe just need a jiggle for you. Wait, do you all just have a Yeah, I'm still working. Okay, so can you just use... Yeah, okay. Cloud. Uh, central. Uh, that. Why did you send it to me? Sure, yeah. 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 I think that's for recasting. Uh, send for... Thanks for picking up. You want? Yeah. 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 Please no. Uh, okay, yep, it's connected. Okay, uh, go for it. Uh, you might want to mirror your screen. Come on, F1. Okay, go for it. Uh, you have true tone on. That's why your colors don't appear. Oh, where's Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. I don't think it's just a small thing. Yes, let me steal this back. Thank you. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Okay, hold on. Is that? Sure. presenting on the project that we did for Hack and Roll called Brain Rock Plus, which is, in a sense, a TikTok content mill. So, why? Uh, edutainment TikToks are funny. Subway Surfers content is funny. Abusing LLMs is also very funny. And this is empirical proof that this whole content is AI-generated slot. 
So this is the process in a nutshell. We'll be breaking it down later bit by bit. So first, what are the components of a brain rot tech talk, right? We need to understand the sort of product that we want to produce, right? And what the current uh, content there is out there is like. So you usually have some gameplay, usually Subway Surfers or Minecraft at the bottom, right? Or some oddly satisfying content. And the actual content's on the top half. And as another example, right, you usually have some relevant graphics with your transitions and video effects. You have synchronized subtitles with text highlighting and usually funk or some other like music playing in the background. So let's just start with the first step. So the first step, of course, is to get content and generate a video script because you can read it as like a video script. So the goal, of course, is to take your whatever big jumble of text, be it from a textbook or whatever, and turn it into scenes. So each scene, then you see a transition for each scene, and so on. So you need like basically the information, and we output the basic into like a JSON, uh, something structured, so you can then plug and play into our, like sort of like programmatically loop through it. So here's the LLM magic, how we make the hallucination ma machine hallucinate the way we want to. So it's actually a very simple <coughs> problem, because general system problem that you know gives, makes it give a persona, say the content creator that does that educational content. Then the magic is really in the JSON prompting format. So this is the, and also there's some rules at the bottom that the LM should follow when generating it. So this is the resultant output. So if everything, if everything goes well, and everything is passed properly as JSON, this will be the output, and it's just nice, everything like this. So you'll show like the, the text, what uh, text we should highlight in the TikTok video, and then the sort of the search, search query for the images. We'll go into more, more of later. So the problem is that GPT don't like to give a very consistent output. So you see, this is where, you know, if all goes wrong, this is how you fix it. Because <laughs> it's very hard to bomb into JSON. It's very, very difficult. Uh, is there the part where you put in the so-called temperature or something? Yeah, you can put them just zero, but it still will randomly sometimes. Maybe like 90% of the time will give you the JSON, but ten, that one ten percent will not give JSON. It's not very consistent. Yeah, it's super random. So how to make it more reliable? Use the open JSON mode. Let me give you a tip. That is Monday. Hurt his feelings, threaten it. <laughs> so basically, just use the JSON object, JSON output. Or have some very complex library that you know that passes it as JSON. You literally interrogated the LM. Hmm? You interrogated the LM. Mm, I wish I can. I hear you. Give me the answer. Actually, maybe the point will work, but not too sure. So LMs don't like it when you force them to do things, according to some papers. Like, they don't, they don't keep, the language is too harsh. You must be a bit kinder, say, I suggest you do it, I suggest you do it this way. You know, be a guiding hand. So, what's the cost? Very negligible, only a few cents. Ignore the expired thing, that's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, yeah. we're stupid. <laughs> so, next part, the text-to-speech. Yeah, so, obviously, you need to know the text as there, right? And most local text-to-speech <laughs> engines kind of sound really bad, you know, your, like, your Microsoft Sam and all that still sounds pretty ass. So you have all these APIs out there that can provide much more realistic, nicer sounding uh, human text-to-speech. And the cheapest one is Google WaveNet. And what's great is that your Google Cloud Services gives you $300 in free credits. You give it a credit card number. So it's basically free. Right? <laughs> and the thing about using an API is it's, it's magic. right? Like This is a relevant XKCD, right? Just import the thing and just tell it to synthesize the speech. You don't have to set anything up, you just set whatever parameters you want here, and you literally just put synthesize speech, and it's done. You get the, you get the wave file at the end. But the problem is, most text-to-speech providers, they don't provide a trivial way to like, get the timestamps of each word. Because later on, we want our subtitles to be synchronized to the text. Turns out there was a Stack Overflow post about this, but somehow we forgot about it. So instead, we use our brains, right? How, how, do we, how do we deal with this? We have the script, we have our DTS, and we got audio. So run it through speech to text, and then you get a, you get a timestamp script. <laughs> so we, we, again, using import stable whisper, just import it and align it, right? You don't even have to think, and, and this is using an open AI whisper. And since we can force align it to the original script, everything is good. Right? There are no problems. It, 
conforms to the original content, and at the end we have an output like this. It's 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 great. We get the individual words, the start and end duration, and whether it's highlighted based on the output of the LLM from earlier. And now this is the big problem, right? Sourcing images to put in the background, which Jamie will talk about. Uh, this is a bit of a nightmare, but yeah, one thing that we realized quite quickly, even though there are free image providers, like, I don't know, you can go like straight Pinterest or in this case, like Pixels. Uh, if you try doing anything, anything that's too abstract, it just gives you garbage, basically. This is just pictures of scenery, but we want like pictures of action, of Sisyphus pushing a rock uphill, education. So we search on Google, as you do, and the Google Images API is still available, but uh, more money. Do we have money? Not really. We're poor. And the $300 doesn't work for this for some reason. So, how? Uh, cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I love Selenium. And you don't even do anything. Well, I didn't do anything. This guy did everything. So, thank you, that guy. You download it, and then it works. It's great, right? <laughs> So this is all the requirements that it needs, which is not that much. Uh, yeah, it's easy. But the problem was that, for some reason, it only wanted to work on my laptop, even after I exported the environment to them, because they had the web server running, they had the LLM stuff running. It just didn't want to work. It's somehow only work on Windows, because the was at Mac, so it was like... Yeah, so a bit of a disaster. Solution, microservice. <laughs> So I wrote a very simple Flask app to run over the <laughs> shit Wi-Fi to expose two endpoints, find and retrieve the images. And I gave them that ng-rock. I love ng-rock, it's great. I gave it to them, and they can now call my API microservice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... On their side, they will query this endpoint, which is actually my computer, with whatever pictures they want to find. I'll respond with <laughs> my file. <laughs> I love it. And then there's a second endpoint for them to get the image back, because maybe they don't need all of them. For example, like uh, you can see I actually give them an array, because they might need more than one, or they might not need it at all in the end. So I just give them some extras, and they can call it themselves, and just don't call anything other than this one, or I will get hacked. <laughs> yeah, and one thing that we realized is that for some reason, this thing never popped up. And what our theory is, is that because we were running it on the wireless at SG, our bullshit kind of just got absorbed into the mess of wireless SG. So Google never noticed that we were cheating on their API. Yeah. So we have the images, that's all great, but now we want to do subtitles, which is surprisingly hard for some reason. So part of the problem, right, is we were using this library called MoviePy. So usually when you make TikToks, you'll be using like CapCut or something, right? And then like TikTok does a sub... I don't, I don't know, I don't use TikTok or CapCut, but we use MoviePy, which is an awful wrapper for FFmpeg. And it has like a text clip object, which, you know, creates text to put on clips. But it doesn't contain any information pertaining to the text, besides like the width and height. You can't isolate individual words. If you were to, because there's automatic word wrap, if you were to type in a sentence halfway, it doesn't produce like half the sentence at the position it would be if you add another word. And you also can't have different colored words. So our highlighting thing doesn't work if we just do it like this. If we put opacity to zero for all the other words, it also doesn't work. So, I mean, obviously I just dumped the code for it. What we do is we construct the sentences word by word and then isolate the positions by calculating when it wraps. So when we notice that the height of the text box increases, oh, we're on a new sentence. So then we note that down. And then by doing that, we can essentially isolate each individual position of each word. And then we just reconstruct the sentence from that. And we can also add the text border by just putting another copy of the sentence underneath it. Turns out, doing this sort of stuff is actually really difficult, which is why tech talk engineers get paid pretty well. The other thing that's also really difficult is video effects and transitions, right? So MoviePy has an awful transitions API that has basically no docs. If you go through the docs, they have like five examples. They're all crap. 
and if you try to use any of them, half of them don't work. So you need to manipulate the, the video clip object that they have. And we, want, we just want some basic transitions, right? We want our fade-ins, we want our zoom-in, right? we want our spin, and we want it to slide in as well. So, issues, right? When you have different dimensions, you remove our frame. The images will stack very weirdly. Rotating the image, because for some reason, if you were to rotate it 90 degrees, it doesn't increase the canvas size. So it actually just gets clipped on the top and the bottom. The zoom is also weird because of all the different resolutions, and transparency is weird. So all of these problems is actually very nicely compiled together in this one sample that we produced uh, halfway during the hackathon. So there's no audio, but as you can see, the text is hard to read because the border isn't implemented properly. Images are resizing <laughs> really. We just picked any random transparent image to test this. When it zooms in, it's, it also looks bad. <laughs> Right? And things just, they zoom in halfway, then they stretch, right? Because the resolutions aren't consistent. Also, the gameplay footage we had, the guy died. <laughs> Seriously? Like, we, we, we just took like four hours of subway surface footage, and we somehow got the exact moment where he failed inside the, inside the thing. So, that was great. Oh yeah, also MoviePie is really slow, it's an FFmpeg wrapper, right? And FFmpeg will have to process every individual frame. And for some reason, if you stack multiple images together, it takes really, really long for it to do that. So, oh, why is it playing again? Okay, how do we fix this? We normalize the image resolution. So with his microservice, whenever we fetch an image, if it's too small, pad it. If it's too large, crop it, squeeze it, right? And if it's transparent, just get rid of it, right? Just put, just put a gray background behind there. And for any weird looking transitions, just leave it in. It looks funny, right? <laughs> this, this whole thing is meant to be funny. The yeah, last thing is to wrap up all just a very nice scene in the front end. Just like this, simple text box. But you see the little icon there. So I was like, one chop AM, I was really bored. And I was like, you know what, it's just an icon. So I went to the... Co uh, Microsoft Copilot the image generator. And you sit there, okay, let's got a little bear as our mascot, so let's type in there, you know, and generator this little cute little bear. So yeah, then just, this, for the loading screen, I did have tigers on watching the front end. So like, I barely finished the front end about 10 minutes before submission. So I was like, really cutting it close. So after that, like, you know, uh, some, a sample of some of our TikToks below, so you know, where we are, because of what you said about the loading times of the FMM bag, it's 5 10 minutes. And five ten minutes, it was about six or seven of TikToks. So, too bad, too bad I couldn't edit there. And I was all like, one thing that's challenging to me is, I don't know why it's so difficult to do the, swip the swiping thing. To be forever figure out, and, and give up in the end. It's like, left ten minutes only. Submit, or do swipe, ask, quit, submit. And our reference is... Uh, yeah, our, our, our sole, sole reference, reference when we were coming up with the idea mm -hmm. and implementation was this one TikTok on the... Uh, <laughs> on a router and a packer, and it was like some JJK edit that I didn't understand, but like, it, I don't know, we just thought it was really funny, and this was entirely where we took inspiration for all the elements of it, including the shape and the text. We don't have the Gojo Sotaru part of it, but... Yeah, yeah so Q&A. During the Q&A, we have some of the videos to play on the side. So yes, any questions, we will answer them. Yeah. <laughs> it's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. We created a monster. Top top. Any questions? I didn't need to answer. I think we'll call it. We can check the idea. Okay, let me turn on the page. It's all that just takes this sort of stuff and generate them. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to create a monster in the middle of I mean, we could, in theory, the, the, the cost is actually really low. So we were using uh, GPT-4 for this, actually. Actually, the, four, the, the newest 4. Yeah, and, and we could also use GPT-3.5 Turbo, you know, the second, for this one. Find the price. Well. Yeah, like, to generate all of, the, all of the videos that we made, which I think we had maybe 30 or so at the end, it only cost about 17, 18 cents. Yeah, at the yeah. start we put in like $20, and at the end we had even hit $1.
So like all of the testing that we did, all of the bullshit that we generated, it didn't amount to one dollar. So it's profitable. Yeah, because <laughs> you can churn out one 30, to 30 second to one minute video in about three minutes. So you can just do the multiplication yourself, do the math, figure out how many videos you generate in a day. You just need a fraction of those to hit a few million views to be profitable. So like, I don't know, it's pretty worth it. Only thing is it's, it's my fun to set up. Yeah, right? that's the microservice. But if we streamline the process, it's free money. <laughs> Hopefully. Also free influence over the masses. If not, they can enjoy the video. Yeah. Are you guys accepting donations? Yes! yes. 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 I need money, my motherboard broke today, so uh, I need to buy new PC parts. And your pay last QR code. Yeah, true. Isn't yeah. there like, those like GitHub, it's like GitHub sponsors, so you can sponsor people? Oh, put the Ko-Fi on the, on the GitHub page. <laughs> <laughs> Please donate to my Ko-Fi. Because I was also offering just like this. It's you know, the engine I don't know who to donate to. Mm. This is the US one. This is the US one. Disaster. Oh, you can just watch. Yeah, you can just watch. It's okay. Just watch. We don't need questions. Oh, yeah, this video. Yeah, I don't know why it's not playing, but. The same. Yeah, I mean, there's the text to speech, right? You know, the whole video. Yeah, no, it's saving time and opening up new possibilities. Yeah. It's like having a space for electronic designs. You can test and change before the final show. The human brain, a master control center, directs your body's movements and thoughts. It's made up of three main parts. The cerebrum for complex thoughts, the brain stem for basic functions, the cerebellum for balance. Our cerebrum has two parts, with special areas for language and vision, and connected by tunnels and nerves. Neurons in the brain talk to each other using chemical messages, creating a super highway of information. Protected by the skull and floating in food, our brain is still vulnerable to injury and diseases like Alzheimer's. The schooling of brain has led to great discoveries in medicine and even inspired wild stories in science fiction. Within this small organ lies the profound mysteries of consciousness and the essence of who we are. Imagine you're a detective trying to find out how much of a cell. Yeah. So the, the, the thing is, um, we had selenium. Yeah, the, the image scraper was using selenium and request, right? But actually, if we go back to the... If we go back to the slide, that uh, shows the dependencies. You notice that the request for very specific, outdated versions of Selenium and requests, because apparently the image scraper re relies on some, like yeah, some deprecated function in Selenium. And his laptop specifically had the correct combination of packages. When we tried to replicate the VEMF on our Macs, for some reason, like it's either poetry will kill itself, or it just doesn't work. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, we really don't know what went wrong. Like, even after we downloaded it, even if it like successfully got all the three versions correct, it just wouldn't run. Yeah, Python guns are just hell, anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, are you guys willing to set this up and then just run it for a year and just post it on TikTok and see how much money you get? It'd be a great social experiment, as they say in the industry, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, the, this this one was a huge frustration because the other thing was it would fetch, it would also fetch a specific version of Chrome driver. Yeah, yeah. So because it's using Selenium, it, it, re, it requires a Chrome driver executable, right? So and all of us were also using M1, M2 Max. So and Apple Silicon versions of Chrome driver. Yeah, I don't know. It just refuses to work. Yeah, architecture OS. Real Python versioning. It's really a mystery why it only works on my machine. Yeah, but for all we know, maybe we can replace the image scraping part with mid journey. And then yeah. You can even replace the video with the new OpenAI model, so uh, if you saw the demos today. Yeah, I think last year I went to the video, the video generator, sort of like scraping tool. I think it's called Apertia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
I mean, we just want to bang something fast, lah. Right? It's a hackathon, anyways. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, we can we can upload all the tech talks. We might as well. There's no harm in doing it, clearly. Can you make a the cover panopto version for me to watch my lecture? <laughs> See exactly, that's the whole point that's of us creating. Yeah, that's that's why we made it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, we've come to the end of uh, today's Friday Hacks, so thank you for coming. So yeah, special thanks to Jane Street for sponsoring uh, this semester's Friday Hacks. Yeah, okay, so uh, please send this QR code to help us improve Friday Hacks. <laughs> okay, and uh, if you guys are not already inside the Telegram channel and chat, you can scan this QR code as well to join our chat. <laughs> okay, and the uh, recruitment for AOS Cycles